Well, can you believe it? Today is November 1st, you guys. It's the second to last month of 2024. Somehow the year is almost over. But with the end of the year comes the opportunity to look ahead a little bit. And so in this video today, I wanted to take some time and talk about Nintendo's 2025 and how it's already weirdly shaping up to be a pretty decent year. Naturally, at this phase of the year, 2024, and at this phase of the Switch's life, we're all looking ahead, man. We're all waiting for the Nintendo Switch 2, right? It's the big topic. We all talk about it. We all think about it. We all want it. I certainly want it. You guys know me. I am so ready for Nintendo's next generation, man. I need a new video game console and a new generation in my life pretty badly. I love my PS5. I've been playing a lot more of my Xbox Series X a little bit recently. Uh, my Switch I also love, but I haven't really played it a lot this year other than Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. And so, yeah, for all of these reasons, man, I'm ready to move on to the next generation. That being said, as I mentioned here in this intro, I want to talk about how Nintendo's 2025 is already shaping up with a couple of really huge titles and then a couple of smaller but very fun titles. By the way, a quick reminder, I've been doing this YouTube thing for a long, long time, just over 11 years as of this week, believe it or not. I'm really hoping to cross 30,000 subscribers in the next year or two, so as you watch this video, if you're not already subscribed, I sure hope you consider doing so after watching. So as I was mentioning, yes, we're waiting every single day to wake up to news that Nintendo has announced the Nintendo Switch 2 or is going to announce the Nintendo Switch 2. It's old news at this point that earlier this year, Nintendo and Furukawa confirmed via Twitter that they are going to be revealing the next generation Switch successor sometime before this fiscal year ends. And of course, the fiscal year ends next year in March of 2025. So about five months or so from now, we're looking for the reveal of that console. And many of us hope to see it revealed this year before 2024 is over. And even though a lot of us wanted to see it happen in October, it didn't happen in October. I still think that's okay, though. Obviously, with every passing day or passing month, the likelihood of the Switch 2 getting announced this year is lower and lower. And yes, I am getting nervous. They're going to wait until after the new year. But I still want to believe that there is a little bit of a chance that we see it revealed in 2024. However, Nintendo Switch 2 aside... We have to talk about how 2025 for the Nintendo Switch already looks pretty darn strong because by my count, there are five significant titles that we know about that are planned to come to the Nintendo Switch or Nintendo consoles in 2025. Now, it is worth noting that there, with some of these titles, there might be some questions on if they're cross-generation games, if they're only for the current Nintendo Switch, or we might even not have enough to know if they're meant to be for the Switch 1 or even only the Switch 2. Like, there is some of those questions floating around out there. But by and large, I feel pretty comfortable saying when I look at these titles based on what we know confirmed and then what we can speculate on the other games, more than likely, all of these games will be coming to the current Nintendo Switch. The five games in question are Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, the most important video game of all time, in my opinion. There's also Pokemon ZA. There is the Ukulele Replay E game, Yuka Replay E, that was just announced, and I'll talk about that in a little bit here. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. And then, of course, only a few days ago, we just had Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition confirmed for the Nintendo Switch. Now, it should be noted that Yuka replay -E is kind of the most unique out of all of these. Like, you know, you know me. Metroid Prime 4 is the most important thing here, and I'll be talking about that. But I actually want to address Yuka replay -E first. That was just announced as a game. I think it was last week. It was very, very recent, the last few days. That game was announced. It's a remaster of a game I really enjoyed, Ukulele, that released on the Switch and the PlayStation and Xbox consoles and PC. Uh, it was a Kickstarter game, it was crowdfunded, inspired by Banjo-Kazooie and Collectathon -Thon collect games of the 90s. And the big topic of the remaster, and I talked about it in a video, was that at the end of the trailer for the announcement of this game, it didn't show the Nintendo Switch logo alongside PlayStation, Xbox, PC. It only had the Nintendo logo, which makes everyone wonder, well, if they're not showing the Switch logo, they're only talking about Nintendo... Is this some sort of vague tease 
that it's going to be coming to the next generation Nintendo platform, or, as I like to theorize, both platforms. It's also worth noting that currently that game doesn't even have a release date, so there is the chance of some kind of random shadow drop or last minute 11th hour 2024 release. This is the kind of game that I could see on like November 15th or December 6th or whatever random day makes sense. They say Yuka Replay e releases today, download it now or whatever, or it's going to release next week and they just announce it and they make it available this year because it's a remaster of an existing game, it's probably already complete. So, we don't really know if that game is 2025, but I believe two things when it comes to that game. One, I do currently believe it's 2025, and I currently believe, even though this may get proven wrong, I believe it's going to release on the current Switch. And there has been conversation of people saying that because it's a remaster and they improved the visuals and all this, that it has to be a Switch 2 only game because it couldn't run on the current Switch. And personally, I just don't believe that. When I look at the visuals of the remaster, it looks great. It looks significantly improved from the original game, of which I own and I did review back when it released. But I don't think it looks beyond the capabilities of the current Switch by any measure. Even the original release wasn't pushing any of the hardware that it released on, including the current Switch. It was just a fine-looking game that had a specific art style it was going for. And while the replay e remaster is improved, I don't think it's beyond the capabilities of the Switch, like I said. So I think that the tease of the trailer was saying it's probably coming to the Switch 2, but in no way do I think that it removes the current Switch. Either way, I just believe it is a Nintendo release coming out in 2025. Now, of course, I want to talk about the most important and the biggest thing here, and it's Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. And I know you could say the biggest thing is really Pokemon ZA, because... Pokemon is the biggest franchise here, one of the biggest franchises in history. And you're right, in terms of sales, yes, Pokemon is going to demolish Metroid Prime 4 and every other game being talked about here. But I don't care. A, I'm a Metroid super fan. And B, Metroid Prime 4 has just a lot more hype and history and weirdness behind it than Pokemon ZA. Because Pokemon games are made and released all the time. And this is just going to be another one of those. And so that's fine. It's great. It's exciting for Pokemon fans. I have nothing against it. But Prime 4 represents a more significant release. Like, this is a game that we've been waiting to see cross the finish line for seven or eight years at this point. And it was mysterious for seven years. And it went through development hell and switching teams. And Nintendo addressed us personally about it. All of the history you already know that I don't need to recap for you. And so that's why I think of all these games that is currently slated for 2025, because as we know, the reveal trailer for Metroid Prime 4 stated 2025 at the end. Of all of these games, Prime 4 to me is still the biggest deal, not just because I'm a Metroid super fan, but because of that weird history and the fact that this game is finally going to be released sometime in the next probably in the next 12 months of our life. And that to me is crazy. Now, of course, I've talked about at length how I think this game and believe in my gut that this game is going to be a cross-gen release. It's going to release on the Switch, and I think there will be some majorly advertised and marketed version on the Switch too. And, you know, we all know it could release as like two separate releases, a Switch version and a Switch 2 version that's enhanced and looks better and all that stuff. It's taking advantage of the power of the Switch 2. It could also be something where it's just playable on the Switch 2 because the Switch 2 is backwards compatible. So you could take your Switch 1 Metroid Prime 4 cartridge and just plug it into your Switch 2 and play the game that way. Or it could be something where there's an upgrade patch that will upgrade Metroid Prime 4 to a Switch 2 version that looks better and plays and runs slightly better and whatever that looks like. You know, even if it's something that you pay for, like, I've made these references in the past, Death Stranding Director's Cut and Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, and a couple of other games that have done this where you can pay 10 bucks or whatever and upgrade your PS4 version of a game to a PS5 version, and you get some extra content with those Director's Cut patches, but they're also upgrading things, like, they're making it look and run a little bit better, so... However that happens, I just feel like Metroid Prime 4 is going to have a big advantage and be able to be played on the Switch 2. But again, even if we disregard the next-gen conversation, it just is a massive, high-profile, hotly-anticipated game releasing in 2025 for Nintendo. 
I'll round this out with the other games. Pokemon AZ, we know it's a huge game. It's a Pokemon game. They come out every year or almost every year, whatever that looks like. Um, you know, huge Nintendo fan, but not a Pokemon fan. I don't play or follow the series, so um, I don't I don't necessarily know the cadence. I, I'm pretty sure it's a mostly annualized franchise, but at the same time, I don't think a game came out last year, right? So I guess this is the next Pokemon game to release, and if there's something I am missing, then I apologize, guys, because, I, again, I just don't follow it closely other than through the news as a Nintendo fan. So it is a 2025 game. It's a brand new game. It's not like some kind of remaster remake thing like I know they do for Pokemon occasionally. So it's a big deal. So Pokemon ZA is a big 2025 game, probably going to be their big holiday game in like October or November at the end of the year. Switch 1, Switch 2, cross-generation, we don't yet know, but I think all options are very likely there. I think they'd be silly not to release it on the Switch 2, actually. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is weirdly kind of a polarizing game um, because some people noticed from the reveal trailer of that game, you know, it's an HD remaster of the... 2010 Wii game that I still own for the Nintendo Wii and therefore I am not interested in the Switch version because I still own it and I don't need to play it or buy it again. I have the game and I love it on the Wii even in standard definition. That's fine to me. Um, but the game became controversial because uh, it, I guess some people feel like even though it's HD that there's graphic assets missing or something and a lot of folks have talked about it and broken it down. It's also fully priced which is the Nintendo way unfortunately and I don't really like that they do that on some of their ports that don't really deserve a full price. Sometimes their remasters and their ports deserve a full price. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition deserved a full price. Xenoblade Chronicles X will, in my opinion. Metroid Prime Remastered deserved a full price, but they amazingly released it at a budget price, so do with that information what you will. But Donkey Kong Country Returns, yeah, full price, and it probably shouldn't be. Same with even Tropical Freeze, but it's whatever. Um, I don't really care about whatever... Maybe there's an occasional banana or a plant that's just not visible on the screen when you play the HD version. I don't really care about that. Uh, I just find it to be interesting that that's a pretty significant game coming out early in the year. I don't know the release date, but I think it's January, February, March, right? Like quarter one. The release date exists. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, so that's a big game, you know, fairly big game coming. And then, of course, as I had just mentioned, Xenoblade Chronicles X Remastered that was just announced earlier this week. As I discussed in my video this week about it, this is actually the first Wii U port to the Switch that I am excited for and going to buy. Because, and make no mistake, I still own the game. You guys saw, if you watched my video, I literally held up my collector's edition of Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. I still own it. I put in like 70 to 80 hours back in 2015. I love the game. And uh, I've also very much not been into buying Wii U ports to the Switch because I own every single Wii U game, physically I might add, that I already want. I have 30 to 40 physical Wii U games. So all of these ports to the Switch, I don't need them. I have my Wii U. I have these games. I play my Wii U often. It's hooked up to the same TV as my Switch, my PS5, and my Xbox Series X. It is an active console in my household because I love it to death, and I love the gamepad. Which, again, is a way for me to say I haven't purchased any Wii U ports to the Switch for that reason, but for some reason... Xenoblade Chronicles X is one I do plan to purchase and I am very excited. It's got extra content, which is the biggest selling point to me. The improved graphics do also look great, make no mistake. And, you know, I'm sad that we're losing that amazing gamepad dual screen support that really enhanced Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. But again, because of that extra story content, to me, it's more than going to make up for it. So... That's my long kind of rundown of these five significant games we already know are coming out for Nintendo platforms, just Nintendo as a company, in 2025. Xenoblade Chronicles X, Yuka Replay E, again, I'm assuming will be 2025, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, and then the two brand new games, which is Metroid Prime 4 Beyond and Pokemon ZA. So that's a pretty darn strong lineup. We know what we know. Two of those are coming out early in the year. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD and Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition are quarter one. You know, I, I do remember Xenoblade's release date is March 20th, so right at the end of quarter one, before the very last days that we're supposed to know about the Switch 2, Xenoblade is going to be releasing. And again, 
I'm so sorry, I can't remember Donkey Kong's release date. I want to say it's in February, but I, I sure could be wrong. But it's early in the year, too. So we have those two games, and then when it comes to Yuka Replay, we don't have a date. Same with Metroid, same with Pokemon. Now, of course, I just mentioned this. Of these five games, only two are brand new. So it is worth knowing that, noticing that, right? Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon are the only newly made and released games, right? They're new entries in existing franchises, but they are brand new games. Xenoblade, Ukulele, and Donkey Kong, they're all ports and remasters and remakes and whatnot of previously existing games that many people already own across the board. You know, I own I own all of them. I have Donkey Kong, I have Yuka Relele, and I have Yuka Replay, sorry, and I have Xenoblade Chronicles X. So it is interesting, you know, we live in a very remaster and remake heavy environment nowadays, and I have mixed opinions on that, and I do plan to cover it on a video in the future, but at the end of the day, even though more than half of the current Nintendo games we know about are re-releases, it's still a big deal and very exciting to see that 2025 is already shaping up pretty strongly for Nintendo. You know, here at the at the end of the Switch's life, and we're still getting a pretty decent lineup of games next year. And I'll remind you, I say this because I think all five of these games will be getting Switch 1 releases. You know, I, I again, some people think you could replay E will only be for Switch 2. I'm just not buying that. I'm not buying that. That game can run, can run on the current Switch. I know it. Metroid Prime 4 was confirmed to be a Switch release when they showed it to us in the June Nintendo Direct. I guess I don't really know the status of Pokemon AZ, again, because I don't follow it closely. But I can only assume it was previously confirmed to be a Switch game and will probably be a cross-gen game. Not to mention the fact that backwards compatibility, we all believe, will be part of the Switch 2. So no matter what, all of these games will more than likely be playable on the Switch 2 just for that reason. Not even considering the fact that maybe there's going to be dual releases for some of these games, right? And so, here at the end of this video, this was really just an excuse for me to talk about and remind everyone that, like, hey, 2025 looks pretty damn great for Nintendo. And that's impressive considering where we are in the Switch's life. Now, I don't think it's going to make a huge impact on Switch hardware sales. I think these games are going to sell well on the current Switch, but almost no one needs a new Switch. Most people already have a Switch. Most people already have two or three Switches. Well, maybe not most people, but a hell of a lot of people already have two or three Switches. There's not a lot of human beings on Earth left who want a Switch 1 console that don't have one. So game sales and software sales will continue to be strong, especially looking at these five games when you look at 2025. But I don't think it's going to impact hardware sales. I think we're mostly looking at stuff that's going to help the Switch 2 sell for the most part. Especially when it comes to Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon ZA. Because uh, I think those games are going to have significant Switch 2 releases. And especially if there's marketing surrounding those games being playable on the Switch 2. Whatever that looks like. So, yeah, this has been a long video. A lot to talk about recapping these five games. But I find it interesting. I find it very exciting. Mostly because I'm living on the cusp of Metroid Prime 4 Beyond being a reality. I'll be able to hold that game. I'll be able to play that game. For the last seven years, I've wondered if I'll even live long enough to see Metroid Prime 4 release. And like, it's coming, man. It's happening soon. Yes, there's a slight chance the game slips to 2026. But I want to believe that they told us 2025 because they already know they can deliver on that date. And I think the Switch 2's release is a huge part of that confidence. I just believe that. I just do, guys. So, this is what's going on. These are the 2025 games we know about for Nintendo so far. And boy, is it exciting. So, for now, that's about it.